By 1649, the War of the Three Kingdoms was near an end. Oliver Cromwell's parliamentarians established a commonwealth. However, many in Scotland and Ireland opposed them, siding with the monarchy, headed by Charles II. The Irish Catholic Confederation was one such group. After conquering their royalist rivals in England, Cromwell turned his attention to his opponents in Ireland. The Cromwellian conquest of Ireland was swift. The new model army landed in Dublin in August 1649 and quickly defeated the Royalist Confederate coalition. Over the next nine months, Cromwell routed his rivals as the new model army swept across Ireland. A parliamentarian victory seemed assured. This notion was dispelled, however, with the Siege of Clonmel in April 1650. The new model army approached Clonmel after the fall of Kilkenny. Impending their arrival, the mayor called on the Duke of Ormond to aid in resisting the invaders. Some time later, the defenders of the town were replaced with experienced troops from Ulster, led by Hugh Dove O'Neill. The numbers differ. Between 1,200 and 1,600 men manned the defences. With royalist uprisings in England, Cromwell was eager to take the town quickly he decided to assault the walls. On April 27th, he approached the town from the north, as the wet marshland west and east of the city prevented heavy artillery being used. Cromwell had under his command 8,000 men. He intended to raise the north gate by breaching the north wall and infiltrating the town. Some sources claim Cromwell bribed Lord Fennel to do so from inside the town. O'Neill discovered the plot, however, and had Fennel arrested. Whilst Cromwell waited for heavy artillery to arrive, O'Neill conducted raiding parties to disrupt Cromwell's siege preparations. Starting May 16th, Cromwell shelled the town walls. After continuous bombardment, a breach was torn in the north wall. The infantry prepared to attack. But Hugh was prepared, and with the help of the townspeople, built a coupure inside the breach. Cromwell's forces advanced, and the defenders engaged them. Despite their best efforts, the infantry who funneled through were quickly repelled. Attack after attack was halted, and his men were slaughtered in the kill zone. Cromwell waited by the north gate for troops which never arrived. He decided to end the assault. Cromwell regrouped his forces. Despite the victory, O'Neill was low on ammunition and supplies. However, the battle was the costliest for Cromwell during his campaign in Ireland. Roughly 2,500 men were killed in the repeated attacks. Despite the magnitude of the victory, Cromwell could replenish his losses. Low on ammunition and supplies, O'Neill's garrison decided against engaging in more battle. They fled under cover of darkness to Waterford that night. Cromwell intended to blast the coupure the next day. He negotiated surrender with the mayor, still believing the defenders inside. Only after agreeing to terms and sharing the respect for the property and lives of the townspeople did Cromwell learn of Hugh's departure. Despite angry at this deception, Cromwell did not break the terms agreed upon. The town was spared. The Siege of Clonmel recorded the largest casualties in a single day for the new model army and dispelled the belief that Cromwell's forces were invincible. Cromwell returned to England shortly after. Despite the parliamentarians winning in the end, Cromwell's otherwise lossless campaign of Ireland had an unsatisfying conclusion. Thanks for watching.